to start with just talking about kind of our philosophy as we've as we've head headed into this situation. Um, I mean, you know, you all know how unprecedented this is. Um, I am often um, just staggered and amazed at at um, what AMSA actually has been able to accomplish um, in the last uh, four or five um, weeks. We we have, because of the hard work of our teachers and other administrators, have been able to take um, the AMSA school to the best of our ability and to turn it into a remote learning system. Now, a remote learning system, we're still popping in here, we're up to 59, 60. A remote learning system is not an online school. Um, a remote learning system um, is a way that we're delivering um, some curriculum in order to keep students engaged in learning um, and trying to retain skills. We're trying to prevent learning loss. And that was what the Commissioner of Education, Commissioner Riley, has, has told us to do. Um, there's no substitute for an AMSA experience. There's no substitute from, uh, from being in one of our classrooms um, and having um, a, 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 an interactive lesson, um, lecture, or experience with one of our AMSA teachers. Of that, I'm very sure. And in a very short um, period of time, we had to create the best system that we could um, within the guidelines that the state has given us to create something that would, that would continue to engage your students um, in their learning um, in, the, in the best way that we can, but in a very equitable way. And that has been one of our greatest concerns um, and, the, and the leaders and the concerns of the leaders of our state um, since the very beginning of this. And I think that it's really important to remember, um, and, and I think about it all the time, is that those um, of us in our community, um, in the state of Massachusetts, and um, in our country and in, in the world, that the people who are being hardest hit by this situation are those who are most vulnerable. Um, it's those who don't have all of the resources sometimes in their everyday life and, um, and our minority um, folks um, and low income folks and um, people that, that maybe don't have the, ins the uh, insurance that they need for, for their, their health. And those are the, those are the families and the, and the people who are being hardest hit. And so we need to really think about our community when we're creating a system as a whole, um, not for those who aren't being impacted by this and not solely for those who are, but we have to look globally at our whole community we have 966 students in grades 6 through 12. When I think of those 966 individual students, and I often do, they have one to four parents. They often have two, four, six, eight grandparents. They have aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings. And everyone is being affected by this virus in some way. Um, and so we need to be um, mindful of that. We need to be um, putting those things as a priority, right? Um, so when I think about the things that we need to be as a community most committed to, I think about our physical health, the physical health of our students, of their families, and of our teachers, and our administrators, and our staff members. Everyone's life right now, especially, um, it tells a different story because we're all having different experiences as we're stuck in our homes or maybe you're a first responder or someone in your family is and you're worried about them going out every day. Um, we have students, we have our own kids who are working in grocery stores. And when I have talked to some of those kids um, and listened to, um, to why they, they feel they need to work in those grocery stores, um, Sometimes it's because they need to bring money um, into the home. Sometimes they have a real commitment and longing to help our community. But when I talk to them, I, I let them know that I think they're heroes because without them, there's so many of us that wouldn't have food in our homes, our elderly folks. And we have families who don't know where dinner's coming from necessarily. And we need to be thinking about them. People who have significant 
stress going on in their home because of the situation that we're in. So our, our physical health is a number one priority. Our another number one priority, honestly, is our, is our emotional health, the emotional health of our students, the emotional health of their families. I think of those families who have grandparents, they're in nursing homes, they're in assisted living facilities and the worry that that causes for families. And so um, all of us, every one of us is managing our mental and emotional health right now. And I think that's something that we need to consider. And what may feel like a very successful 15 minutes in our day or hour in our day, um, something can happen an hour later that can take a significant um, toll from us emotionally, uh, anxiety wise and things like that. So we want to come out through this situation with um, our physical health being intact, that um, we come out on the other side feeling emotionally well and emotionally healthy. And we wanna be able to keep our community together. Um, we want to, when we go back to school, we want every single one of our teachers there, every single one of our staff members, and every single one of your kids and all of you to be with us back on the first day of school. Those are our priorities. Now, academics will always be a priority at AMSA. It's what we do, it's what we're made to do, it's what we're passionate about, it's what we love doing. And it's why so many of us are sitting at home with our hearts broken because we can't be with your kids. So that will always be our priority to educate students, that's what we're made to do. And yet at this time, it takes a second seat, honestly, to our physical and emotional health of our community as a whole. We are here to, at this time, engage your students in learning, keeping their skills intact, um, and trying to prevent any kind of learning loss as we head into next year. Now we know, and our teachers know, that um, the things that are being taught right now will likely have to be taught again. Um, there's things that your students are listening to and hearing and learning right now um, that may not be retained because um, they have other stressors and things that are on their minds right now too. And so, and we know that, we're aware of that, and we're gonna make sure that, that, um, that those concepts and things will be, will be reviewed again in the, in the fall. Um, and, um, we, we know that not all of our students have the same access to, um, to our learning, and we are constantly working on that. We want to be sure that you know that if, the, if your student does not have um, enough or your home doesn't have enough technology in it, so in other words, the six of you and you've only got three, um, and you've only got three uh, computers at home and you need, your AMSA student needs a, a laptop, please let us know and we will get that to you. Um, and so we want to, to make this um, as equitable as we can, keeping in mind the needs that all of us have. And I, I do want to, um, to, to bring up a, a couple thoughts about our staff um, that we, oh, um, we're still we're still bringing people in, so we're up to sixty six. But um, so our staff has worked incredibly hard. Um, when when we decided that we were going to cancel school on that Thursday and Friday back in the middle of March, um, that was done because it it looked like we were heading into this this direction, and I knew that we did not have a, an online remote system. Um, in place and that those teachers were going to need those four days that Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday to to get um, to get there an idea of how they were going to convert to a remote learning system. And they have had to learn so much new technology um, and they have worked around the clock to be able to create something um, that they could present and enrich your students educational experience with. Um, Keeping in mind also that our staff, I, I did ran some numbers and that 15% of our staff are 59 or older. If you start adding in anyone 50 and older, you're starting to look at about a third of us. Um, we have many, many of our staff members who have uh, young children um, or the greater challenge seems to be um, our staff members who actually have elementary school children 
is they really are having to manage the work that's expected from them plus um, teaching. Um, most of our staff members have spouses who are home and working in the home also, which I'm sure you know presents um, so many uh, challenges. Um, thank you. And, um, and so, you know, I always want to be mindful of, of our staff. And that's why we've put in a somewhat flexible system this spring. Um, because I know that I have teachers that um, are, are going to teach during nap time. Because other than that, they're going to have a toddler around their feet. Now, one of the greatest um, parts about AMSA in the last three years is that we've had somewhere between 20 and 25 new babies born. And um, I'm particularly proud of that number. And a staff member came to me about a year and a half ago. And he said, um, he said, you know, Ellen, you know why we have so many new babies, so many people pregnant in the school or, or um, our wives are pregnant um, is because we finally feel like our jobs are safe and that we're working in an environment where we feel safe to start our families. And so that was easy, easily um, one of the greatest compliments that I ever could have received that Anders and I had created an environment where our teachers and staff felt that they could grow their families. And so, um, so, but that also means in a time like this that we have about 20 or 25 three-year-olds, two-year-olds and one-year-olds and breastfeeding babies in our homes. And so I, I ask for your patience um, as, our, as our teachers do the best they can um, with their schedules. And, um, you know, I, I tell them that we want to have this wants, I want this to be a, sin, a system of compassion for them and for your kids and for your families. Now, I, I'm going to add to this that there's been a lot of a talk in recent, recently this week in the news and different articles that I've read um, about, you know, predictions about the, the months um, and years ahead. And so that definitely um, has, has us beginning, beginning to think about what might this look like? What might this system look like um, in the fall? What systems would we need to put in place to actually be able to deliver um, a, a more full and rich AMSA curriculum online if we should find ourselves in that position? I certainly hope that isn't going to be the case. Um, we want to get back into the classroom um, more than I can put into words to you. And yet we know that we need to prepare, right? Because that's the, that's the wise thing to do. So we will be working on that over the coming weeks. I expect that we'll be hearing something from our governor within the next week or so um, to give us more information about the rest of this year. And as soon as we know that, we and after April vacation, we are going to jump in and start to think about what does, the, what does next year look like. Do I think that that's going to be more organized, um, more structured, more scheduled, more curriculum, more expectations? Yes, I do. I, I do. But there's always going to be a layer of compassion, understanding, and care taken in every decision that we make in every step going forward. This system that we have in place now is not perfect. And my guess is that any system that we create for next fall will not be perfect either because we're all learning every single day. We're learning as we go. And we need you to be partners with us in this learning process. I so, Mike and I so appreciate the emails that we get from you to, to give us feedback or to let us know what you're seeing from the parent side. It's, it's very, very important for us to know what you're seeing because we, we're not seeing it from that side. Um, and we take the feedback that you give us, we go to the department chairs, um, we share it with them, we talk to the teachers, find out what can be done to, to address whatever situation comes up. Um, and we're refining all the time. We're getting better all the time. That process hasn't stopped. 
Um, so keep communicating with us and letting us know. Um, a couple of things uh, that did come up in the questions um, that, that Mike got was, um, one was about spring sports. And so we consulted with, with Pete Jones and with Leanna uh, McLaren. Uh, you may know Leanna is our business manager. Uh, Pete Jones is our athletic director. And Pete doesn't know yet um, what's going to um, gonna finally, the decision's gonna be. A lot of that I imagine will be around what the governor decides to do. Um, but, it, but what we've decided to do is just to go ahead and refund everyone's money now. <laughs> So, um, so Lee, you will be getting a refund from any um, fees that you prepaid. If by chance, um, if by chance we, um, some part of the spring sports season happens, then what you're going to, um, you, you'll, we'll prorate it. We'll figure out how many weeks um, are going to be involved. We'll prorate it and then um, we'll, we'll ask you to re-register um for whatever that that amount will be but we know that families are strapped for money right now we don't want to hold on to money um that that we that we're just kind of waiting uh we've been playing a waiting game for a long time around this so uh we decided today that we're just going to go ahead and refund that to you um if there's spring sports this year we will um have you re-register and prorate whatever the fees um would be uh the other thing is around uh there was a question about um organization for middle school. We know you're getting a lot of emails from all different different sides of, of things, uh, from lots of teachers in, in lots of different ways. And um, so we continue to work on that and to try to refine um, those processes. We've just asked the teachers to put all of the, um, all of their Cl live classes into a um, Google Calendar and invite the kids that way so that hopefully if we can get all of the kids and all of the teachers all using Google Calendar, um, that you'll be able to just pull up their Google Calendar and see those right in there. Um, that said, the other question was that the sixth grade um, teachers have put together a document that has all the assignments for the week on it. Um, the seventh grade team is working on that as well. And um, the, there was a suggestion, can we see if the eighth grade uh, team can do the same thing? We can, um, I'm not sure where they are with that, but we can um, uh, get them a, a copy of what the sixth graders, uh, sixth grade team has put together and share that with, the, with them and see if they'll be able to um, do that as well. Uh, I, this type of um, learning that we're, that we're doing, I know is particularly difficult on our younger students. Um, the older students are seem to be flowing with it a little bit, um, a little bit more easily, but it is, I know it's a challenge because I know that it also puts a burden on you because as the parents, you're the ones that are that kind of hands on and trying to help them figure it, figuring it out to figure it out, excuse me. Um, and so um, we will, we will continue to, to work on that too. Um, Mike Naraki, you want to jump in here, um, and we'll then if you have any thoughts you'd like to pass on, and then um, Brianna, if you'd like to say anything, then we'll open it up to questions and see what's in the chat box. Uh, I don't, I don't have too much to add to what you said. I think what you said was was on point and and beautiful, and um, I just. You know, just to sort of reiterate, it's it's, it's been quite a challenge um, as, you know, for for everyone involved, for the entire community. We have 140 staff members, we have 966 students, and we have all of you as the parents and guardians. Um, you know, it's, it's, I can't emphasize enough the, the appreciation we have for your support. We have received many, many uh, positive emails, uh, positive feedback uh, from the parents. Um, please just continue to be patient with us. Um, you know, we're doing we're doing our very best. We're learning new things. It seems like each week uh, on our end, there's been one or two like new challenges or new obstacles that pop up, and we've been sharing all of that uh, in those in the Thursday emails. 
Uh, please pay attention to those Thursday emails that we send out. They usually go out around 7 to 8 p.m. on Thursday nights. That's sort of a recap of um, all the relevant uh, big ticket items that we've been working on. Uh, so, you know, please hang in there. Uh, we're all trying to do what's best for the students, but this is obviously unprecedented and, um, you know, it's quite an emotional roller coaster for everyone. Um, it's hitting our, this COVID-19 is hitting our community, you know, in all different ways, shapes and forms, um, not at a very high level right now, but, you know, we're, we're just closely monitoring the entire situation and um, the equity piece. We know that there were families, we, I think we handed out around 60 to 70 Chromebooks to families that were in need of tech technology or electronic devices at home. Um, please continue to reach out to us if you're in need of techno uh, any technology needs. Uh, we want to make sure everybody has a has a fair sh has a fair um, you know fair shake during this whole process. Um, but no, it's just I, I guess everything you said, Ellen, completely on point, and you know just stay in touch with us. Uh, we're we're here to help. We're adjusting things all the time. We know that change is difficult for everyone. And this is the most unbelievable change that you could ever imagine. Um, so, you know, we empathize with everybody. We know what everybody's going through. Um, so we're here to help. We're here to work together. We're all in it together. That's all I really got. Um, Brianna, I don't know if you have anything to add at all. Yeah, I mean, just to second what the two of you have already said, um, I mentioned this in the education committee last week, but I'm really proud to be part of a team that has made it a priority to, to think about the wellness of not only our staff, but the community and realizing that we have almost a thousand students, that's almost a thousand different scenarios that they could be dealing with um, and all the different families. And like Ellen said, you know, employment situations of families and access to resources and all of that. Um, and it's certainly very hard to try to anticipate every single scenario, but I think we've done a really good job um, and doing our best to, to make us kind of reach that point. Um, I saw something earlier this week on a education site that I follow that said that, you know, this isn't quite teaching, this is crisis management. And I think that's a really good thing to keep in mind as well as again, you know, teachers are not trained in school to do remote learning. So this is very much an in the moment process of learning how to do this. And, you know, people are learning the technology for the first time. Um, trying to maintain the, the interpersonal connections between teachers and students as well. Um, so this is very much a learning curve and everyone's been really flexible as we've rolled out new approaches and new guidelines for the teachers to follow. Um, so you know, I want to extend that appreciation to all of you as well for just being patient as we work through this and try to figure out the best approach for our community. Okay, I'm going to thank you so much, Brianna and Mike. Um, I, I feel fortunate every day to work with the team that I do. Um, my gosh, I I won't even talk about it because then I'll really lose it. But um, so a couple of questions here from the box. Um, let's see. Just making sure is my mic on, Mike? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Um, question from the chat box. Um, what about the fees for clubs? Some clubs are actually still going on and they're meeting virtually. So I think that what we will do is we will check in with the club advisors. Brianna, could you do that? See which of these clubs are still running and which ones aren't. If we go back to school on May 4th, I would be surprised. If we do, then the clubs will pick up and start running again. But if we get news next week that he's closing for the rest of the year, we can definitely look at that. Um, there was a, uh, a comment down here uh, about keeping the, the decision to keep April vacation and they actually um, were thanking us for that. Um, you know, th that was something that, that right away, uh, I need April vacation. <laughs> I need April vacation. And so do my staff. Those are my people and I need to take care of them and they need April vacation. And so that decision was made because they've worked so hard that they need this time. That said, 
we did get additional information that um, basically said you still have to make up your snow days. You could, you we could er, have earned four days of April vacation because Monday's a state holiday, but you could earn four days of your vacation back by working through April vacation. But we had four snow days, so we had three in December, we had one in February. Turns out it was a wash for us. It was a non-decision. We are in until the 185th day, um, but also. Um, I think this is a really important piece. They need this time off. They, we, we need this time off. We need to regroup and we need to be ready to educate your kids for the, for that last chunk of time that we're going to be in school from, or, or working from home for May and three weeks in June. Um, and that's important that we get a little time to rejuvenate. So thank you for supporting that decision. Um, then a question about having online classes for all subjects at this point or not. So actually, um, online classes for all, online opportunities for all classes is, was not recommended by the, the commissioner. Um, part, so the, and, and so there's the commissioner side of things is that high level side of things where um, we want to align ourselves with the state for a number of reasons. But um, where, where they're saying all of this does not have to be done online. A lot of it can be done through different assignments and, and things like that. We do like the online interaction. And yet, um, we, were have, we did have a problem. Um, but OK, so the, we talk about screen time for kids and how much time sitting in front of a, uh, a Google Meet is, is really good and healthy for any of us. Um, and, and so we, we, we asked teachers to balance that. Now, that, that's a recommendation that came from the Commissioner of Education um, about watching that and balancing that and that all curriculum does not have to be pushed through that way. Um, you know, they also talked about the importance of just sitting and reading a book, walking through the woods. You know, I know our eighth graders are, are doing some work of, of observing nature. Um, those kinds of things are, are good for them to, to learn. Those kinds of things are um, to find some peace and to learn how to manage stress and all those things. Those are all, all good things to learn. Um, but it's been recommended that we not have our kids spend 10 hours a day um, watching you know, Google Meet. They've also restricted us to three hours a day of teaching. And so that has to be split up um, amongst all the teachers, so it means that every class is isn't gonna isn't going to pre be presented that way. But we also have staff members that um, that are are learning this at various rates, right? Um, and some of them are are we're able to hop right on and and do all these these types of. Um, just mute yourself if you can. Thank you. Um, but they. Um, they're not all comfortable um, using that kind of technology either. So we we are making adjustments, but um, no, every class is is probably not going to be on. Um, they've we've also had to limit them. I think it came out in our education plan that was sent out a couple weeks ago. Um, but they have to share the space, right? They they have to share it. What we were running into is that we have. We'd have a kid who would have three different classes they were supposed to be all in at the same time. So we've had to schedule that. Okay. Does um, we disrupt this in funding for that coming year? Wow, very exciting. Yeah, okay, so funding. Um, we know that there's gonna be no disruption in funding for this school year. I wonder what they already um, asked. That um, we, 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 our tuition is, our, uh, Mary, just, I'm going to have you mute yourself. Um, we're just getting some feedback from your line. Oh. But um, we have, um, we've been told that, well, we know that our tuition um, for at a charter school is based per student. So we have 966 students. We, we receive money for each head, not for how many hours you're in the building or anything like that. So there'll be no disruption of income um, at all for, for this year that we're in. Um, as far as budgeting in, in the years to come, yeah, that's complicated. And I've spent um, many hours, many hours, uh, talking to our business manager, Leanna McLaren, and with um, several of our board members. 
Uh, our board has been outstanding um, through this process. In fact, I just got off a phone call with our board chair. Uh, we connect uh, for anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes um, every week and, um, and, and meeting with the board regularly. And so, you know, they're working with us through, you know, trying to predict what this is going to mean um, because really this is a global crisis, right? And it's a global financial crisis. It's a crisis, uh, financial crisis in our country and certainly in our state. And when we start having um, and talking about a, a huge decrease in um, in revenue on the state level, that's going to impact schools. It's going to impact all schools, not just charter schools and not just AMSA. It's going to um, impact all schools. And we're going to have to tighten up and we're going to have to pull in our reins. And, um, you know, we but we don't know because no one knows. So what we're doing is we're just kind of. Um, creating scenarios and um but once again this is about our community's health our community's emotional health and keeping our community together keeping our community together that means all our staff all our kids all of you right and do we know what the future is going to bring we do not know what the future is going to bring um none of us do um but my priority our administration's priority our teachers priorities are to continue to educate your kids. Um, and, and we can do that. Um, of that, I am completely confident. And um, we are gonna have um, some, some struggles coming up um, budget-wise. I don't think we're gonna have a true picture of that until probably December. Um, that, that's a whole budget cycle question um, in the way that the state calculates budget just on a year-to-year -year basis. But there's gonna be challenges ahead. Um, but um, I'm confident that I can work those out with the board and and um, with um, with the union, and um, I'm I'm not worried. We have a lot of committed adults that work with the school. Alan, I'm not sure if I, I'm having trouble following along with the whole chat um, on where we're at, but there was something. Someone popped in with a question about. Just as a parent, what can you do to help out? Um, my suggestion is just to continue to stay in touch with us and communicate with us. And um, any issues that you're dealing with or your child's dealing with that um, you can't take care of at home, just report it to us. Let us know what's going on. Um, I would hope that any parent who has contacted us can uh, could could attest to the fact that we we do get back right away. Uh, we've been as responsive as possible, um, emailing, you know, in the evening hours as well for certain, you know, urgent items or urgent, urgent matters. So I would say as a parent, just continue to stay in touch with us. Um, you know, and if we can, if we can refine process, the process to make things run smoother, then we will. Um, so just stay in touch. Um, and you know, that's really the only piece of advice I could give from the parents. I think uh, the teachers have really stepped up. It's been amazing um, to try and some teachers never use. I, I never used Google Meet before in my life until March 15th, probably. Um, I knew we had it, but I had never I had never used it. So um, that was the case for many of our staff members. We never held meetings virtually or anything like that. Um, so just like Ellen said earlier, just be mindful of that. This is this is new territory. And Brianna mentioned uh, teachers don't go to school and learn how to teach in on this sort of in this sort of setting at all, um, especially for for high school and middle school. So um, I guess just going back to the question, uh, just stay in touch with us. We're here to help. Uh, any suggestions are welcomed. Yeah, we had a, a parent ask, they, they have a junior um, and they want to know about graduation and, and all that graduation credits. Um, the, the state is going to be coming out with some more guidelines around that. But um, I, what we, what we want to do for our juniors, and when I talked about that we will probably, well, if we end up being home in the fall um, and, who, and, you know, and who knows, but if we do, that it's going to be, we're going to go back into a very different system than we're in right now. 
where we're talking right now about retention of skills and, um, you know, trying to engage kids and keep them actively thinking about their academics and starting to kind of creep the curriculum forward. We're going to have to, we're going to have to do better. We're going to have to do it different. And right now our, our hands are kind of tied on, on what we're able to do for a lot of reasons that I talked about earlier. And a lot of it has to do with equity um, and making sure that our, whatever system we have in place is equitable for all our students from all backgrounds and all abilities, because that's our mission. Um, but we, we need to, um, we, we'll need to have a different system in place. Um, I don't want those juniors going off to college and not being ready. I know that the seniors that were graduating this year, um, that they're, they're ready to go. They're ready to go to college because they have six or seven years of AMSA behind their belt. And we are committed to make sure that your kids are ready to go off to college too. And we are definitely, you know, a lot of thought has gone into our seniors, um, heartbroken for them and for what they've, what they've missed this year. Um, it certainly just was worst case scenario for them. And I know it's not the end of the world, right? Uh, to put it all in perspective, but to a senior, it kind of is. Um, and, and it's been really, really hard for them. I, my youngest child is a senior in college and um, you know, I've, I've watched her really, really struggle uh, with this too. And so, um, you know, we've tried to reschedule things for them um, in, in the hopes that, my gosh, that we can graduate them on a stage in, uh, live on, on July 12th, that we can provide some kind of prom experience for them. Um, but, but the juniors are the next group on our minds, right? Because we have to make sure that they have what they need, that they are prepared to go off to college. The counselors are already talking about how to help and, and the gap that they're having in making sure that your kids are ready. I mean, follow what's going on with College Board as far as they now have canceled the June, the June test. They're adding a test for September in the fall, so there'd be an August, September, October, November, December test if they can do it in person. If they can't do it in person, they're talking about figuring out some at-home SAT. But forget about all that. Most of the college, most of the colleges that we're hearing from are gonna be test optional. So, I mean, if you get me on all the college stuff, that's my background, right? That's my history. I'm a, I'm a college counselor. So, um, so, you know, but the counselors are being very, very mindful about that. And please take a look at the weekly newsletter they're sending out. I do, um, because it's amazing. Um, and it gives me ideas of things that I can do to, um, for a little self-care too. So, so watch that. We are mindful of your 11th graders. I, I promise you that. Um, we're mindful of each and every single one of our kids. We know that some of the younger ones we're going to have for a longer period of time. And so we're going to be able to have time to make up um, the information that they're missing to fill the gaps that this um, is creating, not only for your kids, but for kids all over the world. Um, and, um, and I promise you that we're going to do the best we can by your kids. Let's see what we got. I love the idea of a teacher appreciation. I mean, that's 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 awesome. Um, I, some some Stephanie Burrows um, in the chat here talked about there's all kinds of fun things that they can do. Um, virtual team building um, that would be awesome. Um, I think we have some PTO folks on here. I, that would be. I would love if 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 some of the the parents got together and created some of those kinds of activities. Um, that would be so fun if, if you maybe helped us by supplementing with some of those fun um, things for the kids to look forward to. And, um, and then we'll focus on the education part. Mr. Finkel, is there anything we missed? I was just checking the survey that went out. There are a couple more questions that came in. Uh, since I sent you the questions earlier today, um, since folks took the time, I'll just read those to you. So one is, it's a two-part question. Um, since 10th graders are not taking MCAS, is it expected that they will take them next year as 11th graders? Uh, and the other part is, is AMSA planning on holding final exams uh, in June in person or online this year? 
Um, so the MCAS question, my understanding is that the MCAS has been waived for this class, um, which means that they would not um, double test next year. So what would be really hard for us um, as far as, I, I agree the trivia night, uh, that's come up a couple comments, they're flashing up. I, I had a blast for trivia night, um, totally agree. And, um, but anyway, but MCAS, and so that, that this class would not be taking them, it would be a real hardship on the school actually if, um, if they um, had us test 10th graders and 11th graders, and then it would be biology would be, we'd be testing ninth graders and 10th graders. So it would be running this whole double testing system. And I'm honestly not sure there's enough days or hours um, in the spring to, to do all that. Um, besides, I don't think like something like the biology test that they could um, they could test them a year later without having um, have gone through the class. So my understanding is when they say that it's been waived, it means that this particular class that it's been waived and it's been waived as uh, as far as a graduation determination for them. Um, and uh, that's that's my understanding on that. Mike, what was the, the other one about? Um, the other question was about finals. Oh, finals. You want to you want to take that one? Well, we're not going to be. We haven't sent out anything official yet, um, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Ellen. But um, I do not believe it will be conducting finals this year, given the circumstances, um, given this whole new remote learning platform. Um, I think that we are just looking to um, issue the grades for fourth quarter uh, based on the S plus and S minus system that we've incorporated and mentioned. Um, I do not believe that we are in a situation where we're looking to go down the road of um, issuing finals. We haven't sent out anything official yet, but I think we can discuss a little bit more and then send something out in writing. And correct me if I'm wrong, Alan. No, no, I mean, you're right, Mike, because what we've talked about is, we, you know, we're like you. We're, I'm listening to every time the governor speaks, I'm, I'm, you know, it's on my alert on my phone and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to make a decision. And, um, and so, you know, once, once he makes that decision, if we know we're out for the year, absolutely not, never. Um, I can't imagine that we're going back May 4th. There was some conversation with the department chairs of, well, if we go back May 4th, maybe we do that. Um, but it, it does not seem like a fair thing uh, to do. I, I don't think it's a fair thing to do. Um, you know, going back May 4th, um, is is very complicated because uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we have staff members that wouldn't feel comfortable with that due to age or their own health uh, complications. We have students and parents who would not want to send their, their kids back to school because it would cause um, great hardship or anxiety in the family. So um, I, I don't think we're gonna worry too much about, about finals this year. Yes, I completely agree. And just, um, I don't know if this question's popped up in here, but popped up at the education committee meeting. And just, just real quick, our new incoming students, uh, we have 132 sixth graders that will be coming in next school year and 18 new seventh graders uh, are scheduled to come in as well. And placement testing. Uh, so those of you who have any um, new students entering the school, Information will be coming out about that soon. Placement testing will have to be uh, more than likely uh, conducted through um, an online system. And we are in the process of working with, uh, we, we issue a math placement test and a reading assessment um, for the incoming students. And we are working on that just so everybody, just so everybody knows more details to come uh, for the incoming families, especially. Uh, but we are certainly working on it. Yep. Um, uh, I'm just going back one, once again to that the mom that said she had a junior. Um, the the commissioner um, of education, Jeff Riley, has made it very very clear, and I could not agree with him more that there will not be one child penalized because of this situation. They're missing out on their education as it is, and their lives have become complicated in ways that nobody asked for um this is no one's no one's doing um and our kids will not be penalized not through the cr our credit system not through our grading system 
um, and we're going to make sure that that they get the education that that they deserve um, and that you have the expectation that we will provide. Um, it may not be 100% this year because of the things, the way that we've been asked to do things by the state, um, but we're going to make sure we're going to make up for it. Mr. Finkel, anything else you've got for us? We're getting close to the end. Um, yeah, there was a question about field trips. Will they be rescheduled at some point, such as the Canopy Lake trip? Uh, I'm sure that depends on when we go back, but that was a question. Yeah, Brianna, um, and it may want to jump. We just, we haven't even gotten to think about um, field trips for next year. Um, you know, we, we do like that Canopy Lake trip. I know Brianna's run it before because um, it's, it's a great bonding experience for the kids. You know, it's a funny thing. It, Last fall, we were dealing with triple E, and I thought triple E was a big deal. You know, it was like a big deal. I had to tell the biology classes that they couldn't go outside, and I felt so bad about that. And, you know, we had to cancel field trips, and oh my gosh, this is terrible. Oh, I mean, that didn't even come close to preparing us for what, you know, what has happened now. So, and you have any thoughts on field trips, Brianna? Yeah, I, th I mean, I feel like a lot will depend on whatever the fall looks like. I mean, I don't even know if places like Canopy would be open, you know, anytime soon within the next several months. Um, but I think especially some of those middle school trips are so important for the class conduct. So I think we would love to facilitate whatever we could to replicate that, especially after you know being out of school for so long. Um, but it might have to be an on-campus thing if, you know, if we're not able to go to certain places. Um, but yeah, we know a lot of them are definitely part of the tradition of a certain grade. So we obviously would like to preserve what we can. Yeah. And yet we have ground to make up, right? We have academic ground to make up. And um, I've, I've often it, lately referred to our teachers as they're, they're like thoroughbred horses, right? And I envision them um, always at, at the gate, right? They're at this gate and they're just, they're just, they're just waiting and waiting for us to open the gate and for them to just, you know, go, um, go full force uh, out with um, educating your kids because it's what they love to do. It's their passion. And so, you know, we're constantly kind of kind of reining them in. But, um, you know, field trips are important. And yet we want to make sure that that our kids are getting, you know, the gaps and things filled into just I, I haven't really given it any thought. Um, but I'm, I was thinking when Brianna was talking, I think we, we just want to balance. Yeah, I have. That's something I haven't even thought about yet either. So it feels like every day there's something that like that that we we haven't considered fully. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other any other questions or or thoughts? Um. So I, I get a question here. It's about another junior parent. Um, if the SAT is optional, will kids be pressured to, to take it to get a leg up on it? Because, well, you know, Monique, that, that's a that's a really interesting question. Um, that because that, and it's for the colleges, right? The colleges are definitely going to um, have to make their decisions. You know, th there are colleges that have been test optional all along. WPI is one that has a test has always had a test optional option as long as I've known, and. Um, uh, uh, Clark University is another local one that does the same thing. And then there's many out there. There's a whole list. You can Google them. Um, and so I think they probably will learn from each other about what's the best way to go forward. Um, you know, the, the whole thing is, is when you start comparing apples and oranges, it's like the AP kids are taking an at home 45 minute AP test on about two thirds of the curriculum that they typically take. What does that mean? What, do, what does that mean? How can you compare a 45 minute at home online test? We can, we're never gonna be able to use those, those um, scores to, to, to look at data and to track data and compare it to last year. The tests are completely different and the kids are taking them at home. Um, if they create a similar test for, for the SAT, I don't know, would it be a 45 minute SAT at home? What does that mean and what does that look like? And I know College Board is struggling to figure this out. Um, I can't imagine that it's gonna mean as much as, as a kid who sits down and takes a four hour SAT in a, um, a testing um, site that um, is being proctored and things like that. So 
it will be very interesting, Monique, to see how this all if this all works out. Um, I'm kind of hoping that it it teaches and shows the colleges that they can bring in really great, strong kids um, and not necessarily support the college board animal that it's become. Um, I said that live on a recording, but um, I think we have amazing kids and we have a rigorous curriculum and their grades tell their story. And I think that those that struggle academically have their own story to tell. And I think that is maybe what can show the colleges how, how great our kids are. Um, they need to tell their stories. They need to do that through data and they need to do that through their words. Um, and we're gonna help them do that. And, uh, Ellen, real quick, a uh, couple of uh, questions about specific activities came in. One earlier was about the Latin Club, if that's still running. And there was just a question about eighth grade step up night. All right, Brianna, Brianna, I think what we'll have, we'll have Brianna check, uh, check in with all the, um, all the advisors to the clubs and find out what's running and, and was, what isn't and get that into the email, family email next week. Mm -hmm. um, and then you said eighth grade step up night. So um, Darcy Cloutman is our eighth grade, uh, grade level advisor. Darcy and I have been in touch uh, with Brianna and Mike and um, Ann Richards who takes care of our scheduling and things like that. At the moment, eighth grade step up night is scheduled for June 10th. And I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like hoping um, that, um, I don't know, well, are we gonna be back in school on June 10th? I, you were kind of hopeful. So we haven't changed that. We're still holding it, and Best Western hasn't canceled it on us yet. Um, we may do something online, um, virtually. If um, some of those I've heard have been nice at other schools, um, but we'll, we're we're kind of holding off. I told Darcy that we'll we'll get um, together again um, on it after April vacation and start to see kind of where we are. Um, and if you know, if we know that that the state is under, you know, these kind of restrictions until mid June or something like that. I mean, who knows what he's going to say, then obviously we've got to kind of come from scratch, but I know that she's working on a video with pictures and stuff and Mike Finkel's helping her with that. So Mike, yep. can they submit things to you or her? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. She's reached out to the eighth grade parents. I've gotten tons of submissions. So whether we have the ceremony or not, we will be putting out a, uh, a really cool slideshow of eighth graders. So, yeah, I think one of the concerns about, I mean, maybe we put some kind of some kind of question out to you folks about if we did it, would you would you come? Or another idea that I heard was doing something like doing something just before we start the school year, like in August, as they're entering ninth grade, that we may have a better shot at that than eighth grade. Um, so, you know, that's something we can think about too. Yeah, we do have, uh, the ninth grade orientation each year. So, uh, that could be a nice opportunity to, uh, do something specific and special for those, for those, um, freshmen. Yeah. Eighth, current eighth graders about to be freshmen next year. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So we've, we've hit our hour. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do these um, every other week when we get back. Um, and we will, you'll get them scheduled. They'll be in, in the email that we're sending out on Thursday nights. Um, if there's other information that you would like in that email, um, please send, you know, send it, um, send it to us and we'll, we'll add it. But um, I, I just, you know, honestly, from the, from the very, very bottom of our hearts, um, we we just so appreciate your support. I can't tell you how many of you have sent us emails. Um, some of times it's the last thing I read before I close my eyes at night, and um, or when I first wake up in the morning. And um, it's the kind of support that we've received from this community that kind of really fuels us and keeps us going. And I know it hasn't been perfect. Um, but we are definitely doing, you know, everything that we can. I know that our staff is, they are passionate, wonderful educators. And one of the things that I found during this time is that what fuels an educator is kids. And we love our kids. Our teachers love your kids. And it pains them um, in a way that I can't explain uh, to not be with your kids. 
And my husband has watched me go through this over the last month and he doesn't understand. Um, he, uh, he's, he's an engineer and uh, he works for Raytheon and uh, he works in a cubby with a computer and, um, and he just doesn't understand. And, and I said, you know what, without children, um, an educator has nothing. We don't know what to do with ourselves because we get fueled and fed by looking in their faces and in their eyes. Um, that's what it's all about. It's about educating your kids, helping your kids to be ready to take the next step in their life. And so we're anxious to get them back. Um, I think they're anxious to come back and hopefully none of us will ever take coming to school every day at AMSA for granted ever again. I hope all your families are safe and healthy and well. And if they're not, please let us know. Let us know what we can do if we can help you. Thank you to all our parents out there who are first responders, who are taking care of us. Thank you to your children who are working in grocery stores and who are essential employees, to those who are doing volunteer work, who are going into the local hospitals and doing laundry, delivering groceries to the elderly and to those in our community who need it. That's part of our core values. It's the community aspect. Often during the school year, we talk a lot about integrity. Integrity will always be important. And we talk about excellence and excellence will always be important. But right now it's all about our core value of community. It's about our community taking care of each other. Thank you, we do love you. We love your kids. And um, we will see you in a couple weeks and we'll do this event again. Tell your friends, we can hold 250 of you in here. Um, and we would love to see more of you um, with us. Thank you. So goodbye all and have a wonderful, wonderful week. <laughs>